Mr. Frankenstein. If you saw the cover of this episode, you saw that we are a little bit weird, like monsters. And the reason for that is because we're going to talk about Frankenstein today. Frankenstein. It's pronounced Frankenstein. Do you also say Froderick? No. Frederick. Well, why isn't it Froderick Frankenstein? It isn't. It's Frederick Frankenstein. I see. You must be Igor. No, it's pronounced Igor. But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? Uh, because Frankenstein or a monster is what is expected a uh, system administrator or administrators to be in the, the old days. I like to call it the old days uh, when we, uh, we were implementing on-premise solutions. But nowadays it's very different. And to explain this different, uh, we have today our colleague Graham, who's got not only a vast experience on the on-premise solution with SAP, uh, but he knows very well uh, success factor as well. So he can, can explain the, this dichotomy of uh, uh, how a system administrator is uh, forced to learn uh, skills and fit roles that are not really right for him in the old days with, uh, uh, with the uh, on-premise solution mm. and now how today is, uh, is very different. Thank you, Graham, to be with us. Uh, I'm, I'm so sure much. it's going to be very interesting. Okay, let's start the success factor show. Okay, Rhonda, so we're, we're going to do this ping pong thing. So you're going to be the cloud and grammar will explain the, the differences. So let's start. Perfect. Hi, everyone. So welcome, Graham. I'm quite excited to be able to have this conversation with you. And this will be the first of many that we'll have, hopefully on this topic as well. So to start off, I think one of the big things when we deal with new customers the big issue that they have when we start talking about roles is that they consider what they currently have. What do you see are two of the major influences when people sit in front of you and need to start defining their roles? Thank you, Rhonda, absolutely. Most companies have Active Directory in place or on SAP instances. There's a very complex uh, role mapping exercise that took place that uh, security and authorizations have rolled out after putting it through their, their GRC process. The, the other big thing is obviously the segregation of duties. Oh, that's a big word, Graham. Does everyone yeah. use that word? Is that a standard term out there? or? Uh, Frankenstein segregation. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. Segregation of duties. The, the easiest way to explain it is, is basically through a purchase order. The, the concept that you should be able to create a purchase order but never be able to approve your own purchase order. Simple security measures that are, that are built in. So... One of the major things is just the, the amount of work that obviously goes into setting up these, these role-based uh, permissions, the, doing the role mapping. And uh, the main question for that is, whether you, what are you implementing? What are you doing? Are you implementing a hybrid solution? Are you looking at replacing your, your existing on-premise solution? This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Um, obviously that impacts what are you doing with your existing roles, mm. if you're disposing of them or going through the new exercise. You just make it sound so easy. Okay, so if I can ask a specific question, in, uh, on an on-premise solution, uh, besides talking about segregation, uh, can a system typically adapt to the normal role within an organization or is it the other way around and uh, how is translated today with success factors in the cloud? So it's a question for both of, both of you actually. Right. It, it's, it's quite a complex answer. When you start building your, your roles, the, it's an understanding of how SAP's roles come together and the uh, composite roles and the tasks that they are made up from, then the role mapping exercise and the security exercise that goes through that. It can sometimes take up to six months just wow. for a simple module that's implemented to get this right. And that's prior to running your, your GRC okay. and, and doing your security tests. So can I, can I throw a spanner in the works here? Because sure. one of the things to consider when we talk about that admin role we're talking about an admin role that was dictated for admin processes, but success factors deal more with the processes from a self-service component. So we are looking at what can your people do to execute the business and not what are administrators restricted to do on this side. 
Absolutely. Success factors looking at the self-service component. It wants your employees to do more as opposed to restricting them to do more. Perfect. So if I can play the role of the man from the street uh, or, or the this office aisle, uh, to simplify it, uh, can I say, so in a typical on-premise solution, uh, the software or the solution will dictate, uh, this is the structure that I have, these are the roles that I need. Guys from the company, please tell me w who you can give me to fill in these roles. Okay, so you might be doing whatever, but now we need a catalog manager. Even if it didn't exist, you need to fit it in there. Tim Marfield! This is very important. You have to get the little girl a new unicorn toy. Eh? Papoy? Bakalana papoy? No, 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 no. Papoy. Ah! Papoy! <laughs> hey, hey, hey! A toy! Da, 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 papoy. Go! And hurry! Uh, while with Success Factor is a little bit more, more flexible, where it says, tell me what is your structure in your company, and based on what people can do, we fit uh, the configuration of Success Factors to fit your yes. role. Kevin, Jerry, watch the girls for me, okay? Dave, Stuart, come this way with me. Uh. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Most SAP roles, you have to consider building in your profit centers or cost centers into the role. So from a standard role, then the complexity takes it even further to yeah. accommodate the... Also structure. for the nature of certain modules, I said. Yes. So, thank you. So do we have some considerations for the success factors paradigm shift? Absolutely. The, the system comes pre-populated with, with uh, specific roles. And you would workshop this with the client. Very nice. Uh, which you can assign and your, your business as usual continues. Or obviously, if the client requires more, you can define more roles in these workshops. But it's very quick and easy, and each module has its own own roles, own set of roles. So this is where we go from building Frankenstein, praying for lightning, rather than playing Elvis song and actually getting to dance at the music. But it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and I go cat go. executing your business because that's what the roles are supposed to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. A lot less effort, a lot less administrative intensive. So in line with the roles, we always get this question about the org structure. Well, let's, let's have a look at the, at the basic org structure, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind navigating for me and we can discuss it further. I will definitely do so. So Graham, we're in the solution and in Success Factors, I've logged on as our typical user Carla Grant. So I have a lot of permission settings, etc. assigned to me as a sales director at this point. How would you like for me to access this? Would you select the home button? Right. And from there, continue to company info. As you can see, simple two click navigation to get to the organization chart. From there, um, the org chart is basically very simply populated. All you need is uh, name, surname, and then the supervisor role. Is and that all? Absolutely. Through associations, the basic org chart is, is automatically populated. That's incredible. That is incredible. And if you have a look and click on Marcus Hoff, right, as you can see, it immediately drills down to Marcus's subordinates. And even if you click on Sid Morton, for example, the system will, the system will still keep the view together and give you a quick graphical overview of the org structure. It's a fantastic easy This to is use fantastic. Feature. So I can see the entire drill down and I can see that I can click on drill downs where there are further ones in here. So you've got a full picture now of the organization if you need this. Absolutely. This and, and as you know, and as, and as we, we know, it's fantastic because the same kind of approach and interface uh, is basically propagated for the whole uh, application. So wherever you are, you still have the possibility to see this with warnings, with notification, mm -hmm. seeing what your team is doing, what your organization is doing per division, etc. So and interact. Absolutely. Wow. Beauty and simplicity. So obviously, at the end of this conversation, conversation, I think the question for the naked truth would be to ask if roles are really complicated and should they remain thus? And with that, it's time for the naked truth. The naked truth. Well, Rhonda, the answer to that is simple. The industry perception is that it should be complicated. The system requires it, 
but success factors simplifies it. Absolutely. And it, it is true, eh? Is it true? Yes. Even even at pre-sale, when you tell people this, they don't believe it until they see it how it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I hope to see you with some of you live very, very soon. And uh, we'll see you at the next episode of the Success Factor Show. Thank you very much, Graham. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Graham.